a heart attack. Fast fatal heart impact. Past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and past. I back up my actions. Fact, don't ask. Grab reactions. Jacked attack with every word. Then act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose. Cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused. Call the shots and they produce. I ain't boss. I'm finally loose. Pick a new soul bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a piece now. Y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember you're discreet now. Get ready for defeat. Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kirusho here, and now, before we do begin, let us give a brief little review. In the last part, quite a bit of things have happened. We had the incident with the USJ. Now, it's a bit of a lengthy explanation, so let's just run through it very quickly. A lot of people died, a lot of the League of Villains were captured, Deku's counterpart was arrested, and over Deku confronted All Might, All Might hit him like a freight train. And Koya, she was mistaken for a civilian or even an actor for the USJ. Now, All Might tried to save her, and Koya bloodbended All Might. And the two flew to safety after Koya, she attempted to use bloodbending again to try and kill All Might. Now, Deku had to get medical attention, and many members of Class 1A they also need to get medical attention, because more than half of them are dead. Now, with that being said, Deku, he's currently being treated by All For One's doctor. And before I do continue, this is actually the appearance I've given Koya for this series. I've meant to find, it, find a good picture or even find anything for her, and I found this one and I did edit it slightly, so it is actually a little different from the original. Now, Credit to the artist right here, because this is actually a very lovely picture. And with that, we actually do have the people who have died. Now, half of the survivors are heavily injured, and the other half, they are still injured, but not as much. Now, Ibarra, she actually is involved in Class 1 in this timeline, and she did survive. Now, with that being said, we actually do have a five or six days later, where Koya, she's sitting by Deku's hospital bed. And right now, it's bad. All Might, he did quite a bit of damage. And the doctor, they have done what they needed to. Deku's had to have surgery. And so far, he is being monitored very heavily. Koya, she thought that she did good. And their mission was a success. She saw All Might fall to his knees and spit blood. She knows that she bended his organs. However, recently, she's learned that All Might is still alive. And that, it pisses her off quite a bit. Now, All For One and Haran. These two have gone back and forth about many things. And right now, Haran... He is actually at least expressing to All For One what he does know about the incident. And, exactly, who, more than likely, will want to go after All Might right this instant. And Haran, he does actually find All For One to be intrigued by this. All For One knows All Might was supposed to die here. And he's angry. The Nomu did its job. However... Apparently, most of the injuries come from a waterbender. That's what he's intrigued by. And all, all Might, he's going to be in the hospital for some time. So, up until that point, All Might, he's going to be in one place. And who better to go after All Might than somebody who, they do have a dark side that they do need to tap more into. Somebody who wants All Might to die right now. And we do actually have Yu, who does go walking into Deku's hospital room and looking at Koya, who she is sitting down there. Hmm? Hey, Koya. Her turning her head. Hmm? What is it? Um, that all for one guy. He wants to talk to you. Does he? It, it can wait. He said that it's important. Her walking over and sitting down. I don't care. Koya. He'll recover. How do you know? 
He's been out for five days. Almost six. I've stood by. I've watched. I've tried anything to get his attention. But I can't even do that. I even tried meditating, but I don't think he's in the spirit world. I think he's just sleeping. He needs the rest. Okay? I understand that. Which is why I want to be here when Rui wakes up. Okay? Listen, Koya. I'm not going to try and say anything to make you feel better. You're beating yourself up about this. I know. I am well aware of that. You. You want to know why? Because I hesitated with bloodbending. I thought I could take those two on on my own. And look what happened. This is my fault. Those two assholes. They tricked me. I just... It's my fault. If I didn't get captured, All Might wouldn't have hit Izuku. I mean, I saved him from a bullet. But that's all I did. If I didn't, then what can I say? He'd be dead? I mean, he broke parts of his back, you. He did everything he could to protect me. And you're just saying that I have to overlook that? No, Koya, I'm not. Listen, we may not be friends, or very close, but I know just as much about you as I have whenever we first met. You're very worried about him, but you're going to lose it. Are you saying I'm, lo- I'm losing my mind? No, no. But the last time you snapped, you didn't recover for some time. I remember what happened. She was my friend too. Okay? I was scared of you. All right? But I can respect you and at least look you in the eye. And I can tell you what's wrong. Izuku will be okay. He'll recover. He just needs the time to recover and heal. You don't know that. I do. Your wounds have healed, haven't they? Now, you just stared at at Koya. And Koya, she just doesn't have that glare in her eye. That anger. And she's just going to stand up, talking about how she's going to go talk to All for One. And whenever she does return, she doesn't want you in this room. Hmm? He's my friend. Yes, I understand that. But I don't want to see you. Don't bring up the past, either. I, I apologize, but I'm just trying to help you. You can help me. By not pretending to know me. He is the only one who truly does know me. I've told him things, and he isn't afraid of me. I see that look in your eyes, you. Don't pretend to be my friend if you're scared of me. Okay? How's that? Koya. I care for him, too. So, stop talking, please. Okay? Fine. I'll be, I will be here whenever you return, though. I can at least do him that favor. I'll tell him if he wakes up while you're gone what's happening. Okay? Thanks. Now, Koyeta's gonna walk away. And right now, Yuta's gonna sit down. Deku knows about her past. And he still loves her. He really is a kind person, but Koya, she's terrifying. Koya scares her. Now, we actually know where you, the Koya, Koya does walk into a room, and Alpha One and Haran are both sitting there. As Haran, he does inform young Koya to please sit and listen to what their friend here does have to say. Now, Koya was going to sit down and hear what Alpha One just started to talk about. He starts to talk about the mission, 
and wanting to know more and more about what happened. And Koyeda started to go about many things, expressing her fight with Todoroki and Momo, and how that exactly ended for both of those two. Momo was shot in the face, and she actually attempted to use a firearm on Deku. And then there's actually Todoroki. She believes that Izuku blood at him, and then there were actually two other individuals. One was exploded after Deku lit him on fire, and the other one, which she believes that Deku, he stabbed in the back with metal needles. And then there's actually All Might. She explains that she tried to bloodbend the area around his heart, and she does know that she hit some organs. But she doesn't think that the heart was where she was aiming. Hmm? Are you saying that you missed? I'm saying that it was weird bending again like that. I hesitated, but I thought I struck deep enough. I see. Well, I do not blame you. All Might is a very tough man. In fact, bloodbending him is no easy feat. His muscles are strong, and that is primarily because of his power. However, he was running on fumes, was he not? Yes, something was off about him. He was shrinking. Of course he was. So his time limit does show its ugly face. Time limit? Yes. All Might has been slowing down. I've kept a keen eye on him. And it does seem that we finally do have proof of it. Hmm. Isn't that something? Well, if that's the case, then I believe that you should do the honors of taking him out while he's still incapacitated. Gun so far. But what am I supposed to do? It's simple. Your quirk. What is it? My quirk? Yes. I will give you a quirk. One that will allow you to go in and kill All Might. In fact, use it with your bloodbending. Now, just ask away. What do you desire for a power? I can take it immediately right back if you do not want it. But, be aware. This power, it could be very intriguing for you to have. Now, what do you desire for power, Koya? I understand that because of your past, you are, well, you are not one that should be messed with. However, you also do want to protect people. So, there's one in particular I do have in mind. You do. Correct. Now, the good doctor, he'd be willing to help you, but you would have to go after somebody from class 1B. Class 1B? Correct. Take them down and kill them, or bring me a sample of their own blood. So, tell me, would you like to have indestructible skin? Indestructible skin? Yes. You would be bulletproof, and mostly fireproof. I understand that those burns you do have, they still do haunt you. The doctor talked about them to me. I asked her on questions. We can heal those injuries, if you do so desire. My scars are mine. Okay. Strong. You want to wear your past and not fear it. I want to remember what happened. I see. Well then, take out this member of Class 1B and you will be able to gain his power. It will be metallic skin, strong as metal, and it's quite intriguing, quite durable as well. I see. Yes. Now can you do that? I will. Her standing up. 
she knows exactly what Off One's doing. Off One's giving her an opportunity to choose. Use her bloodbending again and incapacitate him immediately, or use her powers to try and incapacitate him. He wants her to use her bloodbending and start to unlock more and more of it again. She's rusty, and that is a problem. Now, Koya, she does get a leaf. Kirigiri giving her a portal that she's going to walk through. Now, Koya is going to walk through the portal, finding herself on top of a building, and she's going to look down. She finds it to be odd, and right now she doesn't need to find the right apartment number. Her going to at least look through a file that Kirigiri did give her, before going to somewhat put it away, and go to walk down the staircase. She eventually would arrive at the. She would eventually arrive at the right door, and whenever that does actually happen, you do have where she is going to knock on Tetsu Tetsu's door. Him going to walk out and answer it. Him surprised to see a girl there before he can even open his mouth. She is going to bring up her hand. Tetsu Tetsu immediately feeling his body tense up and freeze. Before, he's thrown and flung backwards. And right now he's floating upwards into the air. Him trying to resist whatever is going on. And trying to activate his quirk. However, that does actually happen, you do actually have his body. It's floating there in the air. And right now, Tetsu Tetsu, he can't even scream. Before you do actually have her blood is going to shoot directly out of his arms and come up. It's actually going to bind around his mouth as his hands are forced over his head. And Tetsu Tetsu, he's pulled out. Him, him being flung from his home, and Koya and him do go to leave. Right now, Tetsu Tetsu's parents, they weren't home. They were trying to figure a few things out about what's going on with UA. Especially because of the incident that just happened last week. They're concerned about the safety of their children. And that's a little ironic right now. Now. Tetsu Tetsu and Koya. These two would head back up to the roof where Kirigiri, he would reopen a portal. And Tetsu Tetsu, he's dealt with after Koya does get his quirk. Now, there actually is the next day. Tetsu Tetsu's parents, they didn't know exactly what happened to him. Because they tried to call to see if he was okay or even safe. Maybe he was just at a friend's house. I mean, he could be under stress, but no one knows where he's gone. And right now, a missing persons report is going to be filed. And speaking of police work, let's actually go over to Deku's copy. The copy of Izuku that was arrested, and held under suspicion for being involved in the USJ attack. He was sat down and read his rights, along with multiple people talking about what they have heard, and even statements given by people still alive from UA. And right now, it's weird. This version of Deku, he actually did do one simple thing. He cut down on his training a bit. And decided to let himself relax a lot more and spend more time with his parents. So he actually doesn't look as physically strong as the actual Deku. And right now, after going to be examined and looked at by other people, they don't know who this guy is. I mean... Okay, so he is the Avatar. That That's interesting. But he doesn't look like how they thought he would. I mean, he got a haircut. It's short, and he just looks like a normal guy. But then there's this thing about it. Hearing everything that happened to him, he tried to find the very people who might have teamed up with the League of Villains. And that went nowhere. He gave up on that and just went on vacation. I mean... Okay, that sounds like something a normal guy would do. But then there's that scar on his arm. I mean, they're curious about that and the little one on his face, but from what they know, that that, happened to, that has something to do with the White Lotus. And those people, they're gone. This guy is in just as much danger as they were put in. And right now, Deku, he goes from being looked at and accused of being involved to actually being seen as being involved as a victim from the same organization. Now, a lot of people are still curious though. The blood bending, the earth bending, the metal bending, and the fire bending. 
How is all of that possible? Especially because Deku's alibis are rock solid. And he even is seen on camera at multiple points throughout the day. I mean, yes, a court could be involved here, but they've blood tested him. He came willingly. He's answered all their questions. And right now, he's sitting in a jail cell meditating. I mean, this isn't their victim. Well, this isn't their main suspect. This is a guy who he was just trying to enjoy life from what they have seen. He's the Avatar. He's a peaceful person from what they've seen so far. They don't know how much blood is in Deku's ledger. Now, Deku, yeah. After more and more and more questioning, even questions about bloodbending being asked, he is eventually let go. And he actually is taken back to his family. As right now, there actually is Koya. Koya, she is walking down the streets. She has an entire outfit on. And right now, she actually does have a mask in her hand. As she's going to walk directly up to the door and look around. It seems intri intriguing. The hospital that All Might's being kept in. Very little security. Isn't that disappointing? We're going to turn on Tetsu Tetsu's quirk, as she's going to put on a mask and directly walk inside. Now, a lot of people immediately do see her. They mistake her for a pro hero up until one of her security guards does go walking up to her to try and tell her to remove her mask. She does go turn and immediately go to blood bend him. Him going to somewhat throw his body upwards into the air and scream. As blood is ripped from his body, and I do mean a lot of blood. None of it hits the floor. His body, though, which has been ripped open, like a plastic container or a bag of chips being popped open, though, that is what falls to the floor. And right now, a ton of people, they either go running and screaming or pros and security guards do try to come after Koya. Now, there actually is an All Might's hospital room where somebody they were sitting down and visiting their old friend. However... They're not too sure what to really do. They're not too sure what to say. They were given a phone call because of everything. All Might, he faced off against a creature and a man with multiple quirks, all of them specifically elemental. And right now, the Avatar is sitting in jail because of this. And they've had to increase security around him. At first, they thought he was involved, but then something started to quickly realize on them, or dawn on them. The Avatar was put in a cage, and his location was known to everybody. They wanted to go after the Avatar, didn't they? Right now, the Avatar needs to have his home moved again. After what happened with the White Lotus and most of the organization being destroyed, they were put into protective custody. However, right now, the Avatar, he just had someone be paint a giant target on his back and basically scream out over here. Now, the person, they do want to make a phone call. However, whenever gunfire just started to ring out through the hospital, a lot of things do start to go chaotic. And we actually went back with Koya. Koya, she's surrounding herself with blood. And she's forming it and shaping it into different things. As there are actually ice needles or ice blood needles behind her and somebody there currently behind cover trying to shoot at Koya them going to throw themselves out in fire as Koya she actually is walking forwards towards them her being shot directly in the chest twice before she just does continue to walk and the person they're confused as Koya does keep coming her going to directly grab one of these ice spears and okay go to throw it towards the wall the, the, the blood rushing through it and smashing into the wall, hitting the person. Them actually going to look down and try and grab onto this thing. Trying to break it off as there actually is blood pouring from their own body. And then actually Koya is one of her shows going to walk around the corner. Looking directly at this person. The person going to bring up their weapon and just going to be, repeatedly going to pull onto the trigger. Squeezing over and over again out of pure fear. And Koya, she's staying there, taking the bullets. 
as somebody has come walking up behind her and attempting to directly shove her or punch her as hard as they can. Them actually find when they do punch her in the back that they do just break two of their fingers. Koya is spinning and turning and going to directly pick up the person as she's going to directly fling them backwards against the wall and smash them into it. Now, there actually is the person next to Koya. She's going to directly turn and look at them and bring her hand up and rip the blood from their mouth. And the person, they do go from choking on, well, a lot of things right now, to having no breath in their lungs, and then passing out unconscious. Now, Koya, she is actually going to reform that, before turning into a javelin, and with her gloved hand, Gwendoki toss it towards that person against the wall. As she actually is going to turn and continue walking. She checks many rooms, and right now, pros and security, they are not having a good time. And there actually is when she has arrived to the hospital room All Might is supposedly in. She asked, very politely, if the staff knew where All Might was. And after some thorough convincing, she got the number. And the person, they actually were dropped off of the ground or onto the ground and spared. Then Koya going to scurry under a desk to try and hide, as Koya is going to turn and walk away. And the person, they're trying to call for pro heroes and 911. However, it hasn't been working so far. Now, we do actually where Koya is walking up the stairs, and people are running right past her. And the people who do try to attack or defend against her they're being pulled apart. I mean, some quite literally. The people who are running out of the hospital, they run through literal blood baths. Their shoes are soaked in blood. And their extra Koya is going to directly stop at the door. Her going to directly turn the knob and pull it open. As soon as she was going to do that, you do actually have where All Might is laying down with a respirator. And he's got something on his face. Now, the person they are standing there, before Koya is going to directly look towards them, and the person, they do, they immediately went flying directly into her, them smashing their body into her and sending her flying out of a window. As Gran Torino, he actually is going to turn back. He knows that that just bought time, but time isn't really on their side. Right now, Toshi needs to get out of here. And if they can't get Toshi out of here, a lot of bad things are going to happen. Now, Gran Torino, he does try to find a doctor. And he does actually find a doctor hiding in one of the hospital rooms with another patient. He was trying to keep them safe. However, after Gran Torino just tried to explain the situation and what's going on, the doctor, they do want to try and help. They're not All Might's doctor, but they do have enough medical experience to understand the machines and what needs to be connected and what needs to not be disconnected. So, after the doctor does at least try to call for a nurse or even call somebody, they do try to get things set up and ready for him to be moved. However, whenever Grant turns out he actually is running ahead to try and check to see if things are okay, there is where all of a sudden he does get to stop. The tiny man actually being lifted upwards into the air. And there actually is where he does start to scream out in pain. As one of his hands do go to directly lift above his head, and the other does go to do the exact same thing. Before, his legs actually go to bend in the opposite direction. And there actually is where he is then thrown directly through the window. Now, the doctor, they were alarmed seeing that. And there actually was that person in all black days come stepping up and around the corner, directly looking towards the doctor. And the doctor... They just decided to turn and run, as so did the nurse. Now, both these two, they started running, as All Might, yeah. It's quite easy to understand what would happen next. All Might, he is then taken down. And right now, after that is all said and done, Koya does get a call a phone number on her phone. Before, at the top of the hospital, a portal would open and she does get a walk directly through it. And right now, there actually is the police, along with, even, along with even the pro heroes. An entire SWAT team breaks into the hospital. And many people, they can't be in there. 
just on the first floor alone, they are hitting their mental limit looking at all this. So much red. And so much, well, mutilation to certain people. There are people who are literally being pinned to walls by spikes. And the hospital, which was so clean and so pristine, it just, it's a different shade of violence. Now, a lot of people do try to understand what's going on. And right now, it's kind of intriguing. This doesn't look like a random attack. I mean, this is clearly organized. And right now, they're easily to find who they believed the villains were after. Toshinori Yagi, aka All Might. His body was found in the hallway. Machines still running. With no blood left inside his body at all. Now, with that being said, right now... The statement has given out. Villains have made another attempt on All Might's life. However, this time it was successful. And the person in question, they have not been found. They were seen heading up to the roof and then nothing else. Surveillance cameras cut out. And that's really all they do know. This villain is dangerous. They were seen walking through gunfire like it was nothing. And clearly they are a bender. And right now, all for one, he is very impressed. As Koya pre pre mm, I bit my tongue. Koya presented him with something very intriguing. Something made from All Might's blood. A little statue that all for one he will keep. Since it will now be his symbol of victory. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.